न्यूज व्यूज वॉइस ऑफ द ग्लोबल इंडियन कम्युनिटी इंडिया अब्रॉड I've said repeatedly friends don't let friends commit human rights abuses and we are enabling by our silence you have been outstanding and I love when you put out your 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 uh, rationales you you lay it all out in such vivid detail it's an engraved invitation I believe for the administration to say but of course you know as we, you know there is prescribed about and it's a one two operation name them for what they are call it for what it is uh and they are a country of particular concern and i would put it h in there huge particular concern for their egregious behavior and modi looks at what we do and says they don't care and that's what the takeaway is uh by his government and by he personally so <clears throat> i i would encourage you to continue on we keep asking we get crickets as to what the rationale is for this and geopolitical concerns are enhanced i believe uh and and the ability for us to have credibility and when we name countries on CPC and exclude egregious violators like India what does that say to the other countries that are on the list uh they, they look at us as hypocrites and that's not good either this coming april 19th india will begin um multi-phase general elections that will determine the country's political direction for the next 5 years prime minister modi is seeking a third term i'm one of those people who thinks that friends should tell each other hard truths and india is a friend and it is truly important uh, to the us that india prosper yet there is a real risk that the tensions inherent in diverse societies could harden into dangerous conflicts and undermine india's bright future if human rights abuses are not addressed the recent communal violence between ethnic hindu and christian communities in manipur state is just but one example congress must do its part to urge the indian government to correct course and re and reconsider policies and laws including counterterrorism laws that are inconsistent with the obligations india has acquired through its ratification of key human rights treaties issue i think congress needs to more forcefully urge the president president biden to speak directly to prime minister modi about these concerns and it's ultimately prime minister modi who has the power to instruct his government his party about their toxic rhetoric and their abusive laws and policies and get them to drop this abusive form of governance. And members of Congress and President Biden need to acknowledge the scope and gravity of this situation. President Biden's embrace of Modi and reluctance to criticize the government for this situation will be understood by India to mean that the worsening conduct will have no consequences and that cannot be the situation. So my last point would merely be that doing so failing to say anything to prime minister modi about this deteriorating situation sends a terrible message that the us government cares more about him about modi as a leader than about the people of india whom modi was elected to serve several recent and upcoming judicial decisions are likely to have outsized impact on democracy and human rights in the country particularly ahead of elections that are that are starting in the coming months these include rulings on the citizenship amendment act whether a government fact checking unit actually has the authority to censor content online and attacks investigation of the main opposition party whose accounts are partly frozen ahead of this general election in closing i wanted to outline several possible measures that congress could take to stall further backsliding in india first raise issues of concerns related to human rights and democracy directly with indian officials in all meetings at all levels advocate for the release of those unjustly imprisoned for their religious speech, political speech or social opinions. It's so important as we've heard throughout the testimony today that the future of democracy in India has enormous implications not only for the people of India but globally. Second, to urge the Indian government to respect human rights online, specifically to refrain from imposing connectivity connectivity restrictions or blocks on social media platforms and to refrain from censoring expression that is protected under international human rights law also to enshrine standards to govern the use of commercial spyware products third to urge the indian government to ensure that the conduct of the 2024 elections are free and fair specifically to ensure that opposition politicians candidates and parties can engage in campaigning without fear of arrest suspension or other restrictions on their liberty to refrain from using state resources to privilege the ruling party as set out in India's model code of conduct 
and to ensure that neutral election observers from internationally accredited organizations and reputable domestic groups are invited to monitor the totality of election processes without any undue restriction. The U.S. government has recognized acts of transnational repression by the government of India in Canada, which led to the assassination of an activist, as well as attempts here in the United States. The scale of oppression facing human rights defenders, both in and out of India, limits the availability of information about human rights violations committed by the Indian government, information that should influence how the U.S. and other governments engage the Modi administration and how the private sector makes choices about investment. My co-panelists and I can provide documentation of the government's intensifying efforts to weaponize and codify into law intolerance and hate. As you will hear from others on this panel, of particular concern are the expansion of the government's abuse of vague and overbroad laws to shut down dissent, the increases in leaders' use of hate speech and vilification of religious groups, and the recent rollout of the CAA and its discriminatory citizenship process, which could set the stage for millions to be deprived of citizenship. It is up to U.S. lawmakers to respond to these efforts, but the situation is worsening quickly, and it would be a mistake to imagine that the U.S. and other concerned governments are geopolitically constrained from taking action. As India prepares for elections, we urge the U.S. government, both members of Congress and administration officials, to communicate to the government of India that the U.S. will condemn hateful rhetoric, legal harassment of civil society, and the targeting of religious and ethnic groups. The BJP party is eager to demonstrate to their base that they are deliver delivering on su supremacist promises. We know the lead up to the election will be a particularly dangerous time. We also know that Prime Minister Modi will be particularly sensitive to messages from other governments, and especially from senior leaders. We urge the U.S. to send these messages in several ways. By Congress exercising its oversight role to scrutinize the human rights concerns related to major arms deals with India, by the U.S. raising concerns in multilateral bodies, for example, ensuring that the upcoming evaluation report of India by the Financial Action Task Force, of which the U.S. is a member, directly discusses the misuse of purported counterterrorism and anti-money laundering laws to shut down civil society, by raising human rights issues directly with Indian officials in all bilateral engagements, including the U.S.-India Global Issues Forum, by reiterating that Indian officials will be held accountable for acts of transnational repression within the United States, by acknowledging that the U.S. has its own human rights problems and is willing to have its record criticized, and in all of this, by coordinating closely with other rights-respecting governments to ensure the concerns are being raised on an international level and not only by the U.S.